Jerry Cohen, NYU, and uh, Council on Foreign Relations. You're both concerned with development. There's a big debate in economic and legal circles about the role of law in economic development. Deng Xiaoping appeared to have learned a lot from Lenin's new economic policy of the early 1920s, deciding that at least the appearance of a legal system would be important to attract foreign cooperation and internal economic development. Be interesting to hear the different perspectives of the speakers on that. Do you want to start, Rachel? Well, I'm hesitate, hesitant to speak about law in China in front of you, Professor Cohen, um, with so much um, experience that you've got. Well, I always like to, this is not trite, but I always like to remind people that the present Chief Justice in China does not have a law degree. Um, he comes up through the sort of politics and justice department of the party. Uh, that's not an entirely fair comment because his predecessor uh, did have a law degree. But I think it tells you something about the system that you can have a Chief Justice uh, who actually, doesn't actually have a law degree. I think what you say is right. I think the initial attraction to a legal system is a utilitarian. They want a legal system because successful societies have them. Um, and therefore, they needed one as well. But as, as, as we know, you can't just have a legal system off the shelf. You actually have to have lawyers, uh, independent judges, uh, and the like. And that's a struggle in China, I think. But I think it's like a lot of things in China. There's a great tension in the system. There's lots of judges who want to be judges, lawyers who want to be lawyers, just as there are journalists who want to be journalists. And so that struggle to create independent institutions uh, that underpin civil society uh, is happening in China. And I don't think the, the, the Communist Party uh, has come to grips with that yet. Tuan, do you want to add something to that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Vietnam actually has done even better than China in terms of, you know, speaking of the Chief Justice, uh, the Chief Justice of Viet uh, in Vietnam, uh, he uh, not only did not have a law degree, he, uh, he was a uh, police general before <laughs> being appointed to be the Chief Justice. So you could uh, imagine what kind of, uh, of, of law uh, that they are applying. Uh, so Vietnam has made not to, not to belittle Vietnam's efforts to uh, develop a legal system over the last uh, 20 years, you know, after five decades without any laws. Uh, so they have tried to uh, develop a legal system uh, uh, and that got, uh, they got a lot of help from the U.S., you know, from USAID had a big office in Vietnam helping them to, uh, to write new laws uh, and pass them quickly so that they could be uh, accepted into the WTO and other uh, international bodies. Uh, trade bodies, uh, so they have you know done a lot to try to to catch up, uh, especially in, in in the areas of uh, commercial laws, uh, but they still lacking uh, behind a lot, um, and and uh, and the law has been uh, viewed mostly as uh, as as a, a tool to uh, to to rule, not as a as something as a, as a system that govern all behaviors. It's 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 not a system. Uh, it's not a rule of law, but rule by law kind of system to replace the rule by decree that existed before. 